Let's get the WebEx recording going here. There we go. Trying to record these in uh, two different formats just to just have backup. Uh, this is uh, observational studies versus designed experiments. Now some definitions. Uh, explanatory variable. The variable explains what is happening. Uh, the response variable. The variable is controlled by the explanatory variable. Um, uh, for example, your number of hours you're studying. Um, well, that tied to your um, another variable, your score on a test. Um, number of hours you study will impact um, the score on a test. Uh, down here, example, number of hours playing video games explains your grade on a test. If you spend an entire previous night uh, playing video games, uh, 10 hours, then you probably do bad on a test. Um, now you can tie anything together, but realize that some things uh, have nothing in common. Um, maybe the number of pizza uh, slices you've ate in the last year. You could tie that to a grade on a test. They have nothing to do with each other. Or at least we don't think they do. Uh, we have observational study. Measures the value of the response variable without attempting to influence the value of either the response or explanatory variables. That is, in an observational study, the researcher observes the behavior of the individuals without trying to influence the outcome of the study. Um, and there's different ways of uh, looking at these, these studies. Um, because sometimes just the fact that somebody's sitting there um, studying you uh, alters your behavior. Um, so we assume that there isn't any kind of influence in that regard. Um, Students come into class. I uh, give this example off, oftentimes. Um, they modify their behavior by being in class. Um, I had one semester, uh, his business calc, I had a student that sat there and he picked his nose a lot during class. <laughs> and it, it, it derailed me. I, I got to the point I couldn't even look over where he was sitting because it's just like, don't, don't you um, <laughs> have any kind of idea the, that this is inappropriate? Um, I had a, a graduate class I took that uh, when I'd get bored, I'd watch somebody who sat there and picked his nose during, I mean, just constant. Um, obviously, didn't have any social skills. Guy's a genius. Uh, probably going to develop uh, the newest uh, 6G uh, cell phone someday, um, but probably never have a date. Uh, next one, designed experiment. Applies a treatment to individuals, referred to as experiment units or subjects, and attempts to isolate the effects of the treatment on a response variable. So, a s observational study, you just study. I mean, not change, not affecting, not giving them any kind of treatment. And then design experiment, you're giving them some kind of treatment, usually a medication. Let's look at our first example here. Uh, it says, determine whether the study depicts an observational study or an experiment. Amado, uh, 1989, observed caretakers of children in public places in California and Nebraska. He found that 43% of the children he observed had male caretakers. Males were more involved with their children in recreational settings such as playgrounds, but in restaurants, females were more involved. Uh, so he just studied them. Um, he didn't uh, actually apply a treatment of any sort. He didn't give them any kind of drug or anything like that. This is the observational study. Our second example it says, determine the study to fix uh, observational study or an experiment. A uh, team of researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, had discovered a way of genetically modifying the gender of frogs. Uh, when the scientists treated a group of uh, male frogs with atrazine, uh, some of the animals will be demasculized, uh, some become feminized, some become hermaphrodites, if I'm saying the word right, and some of the frogs are actually, be actually being converted into reproductively active females. Um, so that was that was interesting. <laughs> it's just like a shock for those frogs as they um, <laughs> lose uh, lose certain characteristics. Um, though I'm sure. Uh, they probably don't mind. Um, we're modifying them, aren't we? We're giving them a drug. I don't know what atrazine is, but we're giving them a drug. That's an experiment. I know these are some. Some of these are kind of long, but I was actually trying to find um, uh, actual studies. And there's one study that is pretty out there. I didn't. I didn't put it in here uh, because it was a little bit inappropriate. Um, it's kind of something I'd put on maybe Facebook as humor. <laughs> but it's one that uh, our government paid for and a uh, uh, university did. Okay, this one. Uh, Graham and Wells conducted a study of bar patrons by recording late-night aggressive behavior in a Canadian tavern. They observed and interviewed 
Um, 117 aggressive incidents were observed during the 93 nights of study. Most observation periods were weekend nights between midnight and 2.30 a.m. The patrons were unaware that the research was being conducted. Um, and then it, go, it goes on. Researchers document patterns of aggressive behavior in this particular bar. For example, they find that nearly 75% of the incidents involved males only. Gee, that's a surprise. Um, also, moderate or higher levels of physical aggression were observed in 67% of the incidents. Gee, um, bar and people drinking, uh, that's un unreal that that would happen to you. Uh, about 33% of the incidents occurred outside of the bar's premises. Uh, big surprise. Uh, Graham and Wells identified several triggers for aggression in bars, including problems with bar staff, rowdy behavior, and interpersonal relationship problems. And um, so if you want to read more about it, uh, and that's kind of a, an older study, but again, it, it's shocking to me the government pays for something like this. Um, I'm not sure how I can get in on one of these studies so I can sit in a bar every night and on the government's money and <laughs> just watch people and how many fights they get in, how many scuffles. But anyway, they did. Uh, notice they did not apply a treatment, did they? Uh, they did not say um, that we, we gave them more alcohol to see what would happen. Um, it actually says the patrons were unaware that the research was being conducted. Uh, so this is an observational study. Uh, fourth example. Uh, same thing, determine what type it is. It says a recent study in the journal Marketing um, Communications, or recent study in journal Marketing Communications, found that men with beards were deemed more credible than those who were clean shaven. The study showed participants pictures of men endorsing certain products, and some photos of men were clean shaven, and others the same men had beards. Participants thought the men with beards had greater expertise and were significantly more trustworthy when they were endorsing products like cell phones and toothpaste. Um, eh, nowhere do they refer to giving them treatment, do they? Uh, they're just showing them um, pictures and then studying them. So that's observational study. Okay, fifth one. Uh, systematic study of the beneficial and adverse consequences of long-term elevations in the plasma levels of bo bovine, bovine growth horm hormone, BGH, was conducted on two lines of transgenic uh, pigs. Two successive generations of pigs expressing the BGH gene showed significant improvements in both daily weight gain and feed efficiency. Now, I don't know what that uh, B BGH is, but it's a hormone they're giving them. So they're giving them some kind of treatment. I don't even need to read the rest. Uh, that's an experiment. Now, confounding. This occurs in a study when the uh, effects of two or more explanatory variables are not separated. Uh, therefore, any relation that may exist between the explanatory variable and the response variable may be due to some other variable or variables not accounted for in a study. Um, this is really kind of hard to um, hard to control um, because, especially in human human studies. Because uh, you got uh, somebody and they're coming in maybe to get treatment, they're going home. Well, what what else are they doing at home? Um, is there could be something else that's affecting um, the results? Now, when you got uh, lab lab animals, uh, lab rats, you can control everything. So you got more more on that. But <coughs> excuse me, as you get into human studies, and it you know there's a lot of different variables you may not may not have uh, anticipated that they're doing. I always like to watch that show House, and uh, in that uh, show, it's about a doctor. He talks about how patients lie, and uh, people doing these studies uh, may lie, uh, because their goal is to get the money. Um, you know, the process they're given some kind of unusual drug may grow a third eye, uh, but they're trying to pick up some extra money, so they may lie about what what's really happening, so that they uh, can stay in a study or they can get into it in the first place. Uh, lurking variable. This is an explanatory variable that was not considered in a study, but it affects the value of the response variable in the study. Uh, note, observational studies do not allow researchers to claim causation, only association. Um, so you're sitting there studying somebody, and uh, you go to a pizza joint, and uh, again, you find they eat a lot of pizza, and you go and you see that they're good in school. Um, well, that does not say that pizza is causing that, uh, so you have to be careful on that. Now, various types of observational studies. Uh, we've got cross-sectional studies. This is collect information about individuals at a specific point in time over or over a very short period of time. Um, 
these are a lot easier to do uh, than, than other types of studies. Um, you know, I can go down to the mall and I can observe uh, what's going on and record it. Or I could go down to a, a, a mall, find somebody, follow them, follow them for the next 30 days, and you know, record observations about them uh, cross-sectionally, just looking at a specific point in time. Uh, now, now this isn't just always just studying somebody live or studying your subject live. This could be looking at um, uh, results that somebody else has collected. Now, case control studies. These studies are retrospective, meaning that they require individuals to look back in time or require the researcher to look at existing records. Um, maybe you want to look at uh, the last 20, 20 years, um, so look back in time. Now, um, co cohort uh, studies identifies individuals and studies them over an extended period of time. Uh, there was one that they were talking about in the book is pretty interesting. Uh, farming, Farmingham, or something, something to that extent, where there it's a big study they did, and they, they followed people over an extended period of time, and they they find out uh, some very uh, useful information. And uh, to be honest, I don't remember what it was about, whether it's cancer or what, but. Um, I would definitely read the sections, and you, there's a lot of um, useful information in them, and uh, interesting, I think. Now we have a, a type of um, study called a census, and this is a list of all individuals in a population along with certain characteristics of each individual. Uh, this is very difficult to be to do usually. Um, for example, if I want to do a census of everybody in Arc City. I don't know how many people are in there, but let's say 8,000 people. To go around and talk with everybody would be uh, impossible for one reason. Uh, a lot of people won't uh, open the door if they have somebody strange there. Not saying I'm strange, but um, <laughs> uh, just a stranger. Um, some people may live out in a trailer uh, alongside a river. Uh, no electricity, no address, uh, living off the grid. Um, I'll never be able to find them. And if I did, I probably wouldn't want to go up to them anyway. They'd probably have a shotgun in their trailer. Um, so very difficult to get. If you got homeless people, well, they're living under a bridge. I don't know that. Uh, census, a true census is impossible. Unless you're dealing with a very small um, population you're, you're looking at. Uh, the United States does a census. And uh, besides being very difficult to do, it's also costly. Uh, the U.S. Census in 2010 cost $5.4 billion. Now, it also gives you a lot of useful information. For example, if I'm wanting to pump money into um, the school systems in Tennessee, well, if my graduation rate is 50%, and I don't know what it is, it's not 50%, but let's say it was, and uh, it'd probably be better for me to pump money into their high school, um, their K-12 through uh, program, versus the higher education. Because we're not even getting them through high school. Um, you definitely, I don't want to put the, the money in the college. I mean, it'd be beneficial there, I'm sure. But, but first things first is we need to get people through the, the high school. So a census kind of gives them an idea of where to spend the money at. Um, gives them, uh, besides just uh, feel good, um, you know, well, I think it'd feel good to spend the money here or here. Or I think it may be here. They actually got data they can base their decisions upon, which is always good. And that's the end of that section. So let me uh, stop the different recorders.